this is John Bob. I would like to do a reading of Daniel's prayer, which is found in Daniel 9. Now, I know a lot of brothers like uh, Tetris Power is about to do a fast, and we also know that uh, Yoke Up has been doing a fast for 40 days, standing in the gap for the atheists. And uh, so perhaps some brothers uh, like Tetris Power uh, and possibly some others like myself may consider to do some kind of fast like Daniel, uh, which is a vegetable only. There's also a Nazarite fast which is no fruit of the vine at all, even grape juice. A lot of people just think that the Nazarite fast is uh, no wine, but it's actually no fruit of the vine at all. <coughs> Black currant, you know. Uh, whatever uh, fruit. So here we go. Daniel 9, verse 4. And I prayed to Yahweh my Elohim and made confession <coughs> and said, O Yahweh, great and awesome El, guarding the covenant and kindness to those who love him and to those who guard his commands. Again, uh, a lot of people don't really know what the word Brit or British means. It actually comes from the covenant that the British nation, uh, firstly it was the Scottish nation, made with God. And that's why we have uh, Protest Protestant Britain, Protestant America. It was because of the covenant that they made with God about 400 years ago. So this at this point, Daniel is praying for his people, who again were the Jewish people, who are still under covenant with uh, the true God as well. And if I, I can't think of the author at the moment, but there is more than one author that has drawn a lot of uh, similarities between the two nations, uh, between the Jewish or, or the nation of Israel and the nation of Scotland, for that reason, because it's the only modern day nation uh, the past 2000 years that's also signed a covenant with the true God uh, we have sinned and did crookedness and did wrong and rebelled and turned aside from your commands and from your right rulings sounds a lot like today and we have not listened to your servants the prophets who spoke in your name to our sovereigns our heads and our fathers and to all the people of the land O Yahweh, to you is the righteousness, and to us is the shame of face, as it is this day, to the men of Yehuda, uh, which is the Jews, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those near and those far off in the lands to which you have driven them, because of their trespass, which they have trespassed against you. O Master, to us is the shame of face, to our sovereigns, to our heads, to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. So, to get it in perspective, I don't think there's a single church denomination out there that uh, can take any pride in what they've done in the past uh, few decades or hundreds, hundreds of years. I think we're all in the same position, seeking Yahweh, his true judgments and his word for this generation which I believe the prophets have spoken about to Yahweh our Elohim are the compassions and forgiveness uh, for which we have rebelled against him and we have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh our Elohim to walk in his Torah which is Torah it's plural of Torah laws which he set before us through his servants the prophets and to all Israel have transgressed your Torah. That could say, uh, well, British actually means uh, covenant man. Brit is covenant, and Ish is man. So when we think of the British Isles, uh, in the in the Hebrew, we should think of covenant men because it was the covenanters that started the Reformation movement about four hundred years ago. <laughs> And all Israel have transgressed your Torah and turned aside so as not to obey your voice. So the curse of the oath written in the Torah of Moshe, the servant of Elohim, 
have been poured out on us, for we have sinned against him. Now, the curse of the law uh, was paid for by Yeshua. Okay, so when we accept Yeshua as our Savior and Messiah, then we retain the blessings of the Torah, the blessings of the law, and the curse of the law is paid for and it's done away in that believer's life, but the law itself is not done away because it's the law, as Paul wrote, it's the law that actually uh, convicts us of our sin, that tells us we're sinners in the first place, so it can't possibly be done away. And the Messiah uh, spoke about that too. I've came to fulfill the law, not to do away with it. So that should tell a lot of believers where they are today. Is it a popularity gospel they're preaching, or is it the real deal? Verse 12, And he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against the rulers who judged us by bringing upon us great evil for under all the heavens there has not been done like what has been done to Jerusalem <coughs> as it is written in the Torah of Moshe all this evil has came upon us and we have not entreated or sought the face of Yahweh or Elohim to turn back from our crookedness <coughs> excuse me, and to, to study your truth Remember that line again that Paul wrote, study to show yourself approved. Are you doing that too? I uh, hope this encourages you. Hence, Yahweh has watched over the evil and has brought it upon us. For Yahweh, our Elohim, is righteous in all his works, which he has done. But we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Yahweh, our Elohim, who brought your people out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, with a strong hand and made yourself a name. I wonder how many Christians today proclaim that name. Another challenge for you out there, okay? Whether you are messianic or you are Christian. As it is this day, we have sinned and we have done wrong. Now the first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me, saith the Lord. Well, it saith, the Yod Vavhe. Verse 16, and I'm reading from the scriptures. Uh, o Yahweh, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your displeasure and your wrath be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your set-apart mountain. For because of our sins and because of the crookedness of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all those around us. And now, our Elohim, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications, and for the sake of Yahweh, cause your face to shine on your set-apart place which is laid waste. O my Elohim, incline your ear and here, open our eyes and see our wastes and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great compassion. O Yahweh, hear. Again, again, uh, now the, the Old Testament I don't think was really a testament of works either. It was, you know, even you know, God was forgiving in the Old Covenant as well, and they had to repent. That was the message uh, from the first prophet of Israel right through to Yeshua uh, uh, and John before him, who, who, who preached, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. So, again, we must recognize by the law that we are sinners and repent. Verse 19, O Yahweh, hear. O Yahweh, forgive. O Yahweh, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my Elohim, for your city and your people are called by your name. And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before Yahweh, my Elohim, for the set-apart mountain of my Elohim, Elohim is just another word for God. It means mighty one. While I was still speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision in the beginning, came close to me in swift flight about the time of the evening offering. 
Now, I'll just leave it there, and the angel Gabriel gives some more prophecy for Daniel about the Israel and of Yehuda. Yeah, so I hope you're blessed by this word, and uh, if you feel inclined to do a fast, uh, obviously just pray about it beforehand and ask the Lord about it, and I'm sure the Lord will bless you and take you through that fast because uh, he's the one that gives us strength and sustains us and makes us able to, to serve him and to speak his word as well. So praise be to, to Yah and may you be blessed.